Hi there. In this video, uh, I'm going to be looking at, again, operation strategies, however, uh, focusing on supply chain management. Uh, so firstly, what is supply chain management? Um, it could also be um, uh, the, using SCM. So if you see that throughout any of this presentation or throughout the um, syllabus or any other information you have, uh, supply chain management is what we're talking about. Um, now this involves integrating and managing the flow of supplies, okay, from the inputs through the transformation processes to the outputs, um, to best meet the meet, uh, best meet the needs of consumers. Okay, so it's the flow of supplies. Now, the best way of uh, working out the supply chain of a product is to start with the output and then actually work your way back to the input. Okay, uh, and that best shows you the flow of where everything's coming from. Now, within supply chain management, there are a few uh, elements. So the first one is looking at sourcing, which is basically where are they purchasing their inputs from? Okay, where are they sourcing their inputs from? Um, and when they do that, a business needs to firstly assess consumer demand. Um, how much of the product are consumers actually um, wanting? Because that then determines how much of an input the business will be purchasing. Um, looking at as well at quality, um, what kind of quality is the um, business uh, using for their inputs, for their product, okay? So when um, you looked at the performance objectives as an operation strategy, quality was one of them, okay? Now, in terms of um, what type of uh, market the business is aiming its products at, that will determine the quality, okay? So when they source their inputs, they need to also work out um, not just how much of it do people want, but also what the quality is going to be. Um, how responsive is the supplier? If the business were to make a phone call uh, or send an email today asking for supplies, how long will it take until that order is fulfilled? Okay, basically, what's the lead time, to use the business terminology, between the order being made and the order being fulfilled on the supplier's end? Um, and then look at costs as well. Now, costs comes up a lot, okay? Needing to minimize costs. What's the best value for money that the business can find when it comes to sourcing their inputs? Um, now, when it comes to sourcing as well, there's a number of things they can do, okay? Now, the first one is called supplier rationalization. Now, what this means is basically the business is going to evaluate the all the supplies they have, okay, and basically whittle them down, shave them down, okay, until they get to the lowest number possible of the most reliable, cost-effective suppliers. Okay, so um, that's, you know, an example, um, you know, company ABC, um, they might have 100 suppliers that they deal with. Now, 100 supplies is a lot to deal with, okay, because there's going to be a lot of variation in the quality of inputs, how long it takes, etc. So what supplier rationalization does is company ABC will take that 100 suppliers, determine which ones are the most reliable in terms of fulfilling orders, fulfilling them on time, the most cost effective, and they'll, um, they'll shave it down. Let's say they might only get to five suppliers, okay, but... They're the most responsive, the most cost-effective, the most um, uh, reliable suppliers that they will deal with in the end. Um, we've got backwards vertical integration. Now, this is a concept that was dealt with in the preliminary course um, in the Nature of Business course when it came to uh, business growth and decline. One way a business can grow is to undertake backwards vertical integration. Now, what this means is uh, they're buying the basically um, the chain before them, okay, when it comes to the product. Now, I know that sounds confusing, but I'll use an example of a bakery, okay? So uh, a bakery wants to ensure that they get a constant supply of good quality wheat, okay? One way they can do that is to 
use backwards vertical integration. And what that will mean is they would buy a wheat farm, okay? A link back in the supply chain, okay? They will buy the wheat farm, okay? Now that means that they can then control the input, okay? Because they know exactly what it is. Um, another thing in sourcing is cost minimization. Again, finding the most reliable uh, suppliers, finding the most uh, most um, um, suitable inputs in order to minimize costs, and also the most flexible uh, and responsive supply chain. Now, one way of minimizing costs is to not store too many uh, finished products, okay? If you have a warehouse, which we'll look at uh, in a minute um, as well, um, that requires, you know, security. It might require cool room if it, you're dealing with uh, perishable food products. Um, if, you're, if you have that full of finished products, they're sitting there and they're costing you money. So what a lot of businesses will do is to actually just uh, run on the boat, uh, the minimum they need in order to keep the um, uh, keep the lines moving. So what that means is um, they need a very flexible and responsive supply chain. So if they were to call up their supplier and say we need something tomorrow, will they get it tomorrow or will they have to wait? Okay, if they have to wait, they might then uh, lose sales because they don't have enough uh, inputs to keep the stock up. Um, now, when we look at global sourcing, this refers to businesses purchasing supplies uh, or services without being constrained by location, only cost. Okay, globalization has meant that uh, businesses around the world um, can now operate quite freely. So this is now not so much, um, you know, am I able to get these supplies in from China or from Germany? It's more, which one's going to be more cost efficient for me? Um, and also when it comes to supply chain management, we have e-commerce, uh, which is basically the buying and selling of goods and services via the internet. Now, a way that a business can use this for supply chain management is through what we call e-procurement. Now, this allows a supplier direct access to the business's levels of supplies. So what that means is, say for example, company ABC makes tables, okay? Now, on their online system, it will keep track of how many planks of wood they have to make their tables. Now, as soon as those numbers of uh, planks of wood gets to a predetermined point, let's say for example, it hits 100 planks, the operations manager or whoever's in charge doesn't even need to pick up the phone and say, um, can we please order some more planks of wood? It will automatically trigger a formal uh, request from the buyer over to the supplier and they will be able to um, send them more planks of wood. Okay, so once the stock falls to a predetermined point, the supplier is going to supply, even without that formal request from the buyer. It already gets done uh, through the online systems. Um, we've also got this uh, idea of B2B, business to business, which is that direct access from one business to another business as well, um, which is something they can use for supply chain management. Um, and finally, um, they a business can opt to sell directly to consumers, okay, as opposed to going through a retailer, um, selling their products, for example, to Coles or Woolworths and then going through them, but sell it uh, directly to consumers. Now that transaction is called uh, business to consumer, B to C. Okay. Um, now the very final element of supply chain management I want to look at is logistics. Okay. Now um, logistics is a very broad term that relates to a few things. Okay. It refers to distribution. So basically how are the goods or the services going to get to the customer from the manufacturer? Okay. Now, um, the type of product and the cost of transportation are going to determine the mode of transportation selected, okay? So, um, some products, due to their nature, can only be transported by particular modes. Coal, you can't put it on an airplane and send it across, okay? You gotta put it on trains, put it on ships, put it on trucks even, okay? Uh, fresh fruit. You're going to be putting them in boxes, maybe even with uh, individual wrapping to make sure that they're protected. But the truck, 
might also have refrigeration in it as well, and that then increases costs. Okay, so uh, the type of product and how much it costs to actually um, transport it are going to then determine uh, what transportation is actually selected. Okay, um, and some products have to be sent in certain ways. Okay, so that then limits really their options when it comes to choosing transportation modes. Uh, logistics also refers to storage, warehouses, and distribution centers. Okay, so finding a secure place to hold the stock until it's required, so storage or warehousing, um, or a distribution center, which is a short-term storage, uh, which then goes to retailers. So a warehouse is more the location where the stock is going to be sitting for quite a long period of time, okay, in large quantities, and then that will might move to a distribution center. Whereas a distribution center is more a smaller area um, with lower amounts of stock. However, they're located in areas that might be close to rail lines, might be close to uh, motorways, where trucks or trains can easily pick up a small amount and take it straight to the local Coles, the local Woolworths, the local Aldi, the local um, IGA. Okay, so it's more of a short-term storage, which is then going to be sent to the retailers. Okay, now, they also have their costs. You're paying for the security of the areas. You're paying for the rent or the, or the mortgage of the area as well. You're paying for maybe heating or cooling as well. So when it comes to the storage, warehousing, and distribution centers, a business also uh, needs to work out what's the most cost-effective way okay, to be able to do it. And finally, uh, logistics also looks at material handling and packaging. Okay, different products require different methods. Uh, a business that is going to be uh, handling packaging and delivering bricks is going to be operating in quite a different way than a business that deals in eggs, for example, or glass, for example. Okay, so again, um, when it comes to um, supply chain management, they need to look at okay, well. What are we making and what's the easiest and uh, most efficient way of getting it to the customer? Okay, well, um, the next video is going to look at outsourcing. Uh, however, I hope this video was valuable for you when it comes to supply chain management. Thank you.